and at the moment I'm getting it much more consistently. What? I'm getting it way more consistently than I was, like, literally yesterday. Hello, and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. As you know, recently I've been getting back into yo-yoing, mostly because there was a new character in Guilty Gear Strive, a character that uses not one, but two yo-yos in order to do their attacks in the game, and a lot of the coolest attacks that you see in Guilty Gear Strive are done like this. A yo-yo that comes back when you pull on it. Now there are various different kinds of yo-yos. If you do a sleeper on a yo-yo like this, then no matter how hard you tug on it, it's not going to come back unless you do a special technique called a bind. However, I can't really be bothered to do that. I really wanted to learn more about looping yo-yo styles because I cannot do that consistently. Now I've got a brand new yo-yo here. I'm going to show it to you in a moment, but essentially what it's going to do is make my yo-yo look a little bit more like this. This is a cheap looping yo-yo that I got from the same shop. It's called Spin Gear in Akihabara. Anyway, I had two different versions of this. I had a green one and a red one. And if you just unscrew the halves apart and then stick them together on each other, then you've got two sided yo-yos because when you do a loop with the yo-yo, it should come back and be a different color. So that's how you'll know whether the yo-yo has actually done a loop properly or whether it's come back on the same side and not done the loop. So in order to make this nice Loop 720 yo-yo a little bit more like this, I've gone and picked up another one. Now if you've never purchased a yo-yo like this before, this cost me $20, just under $20 here in Japan. And what you get with it for $20 is all sorts of useless stuff. You get some packaging, you get <laughs> like a DVD. I'm never gonna watch this DVD. Now that we have YouTube, do we really need to distribute DVDs with our yo-yos? But this is the yo-yo itself. So just give you a good close look. It is the Loop 720. On this side, it's actually the right way up. So what I plan to do is get this out the box and then remove the two halves and stick them on this so that we've got two yo-yos that are both two different colors. I'll just pull it out of the packaging like so. I believe with these yo-yos, they give you things like a spare string, which is useful. Don't know if you get a spare bearing depending on the type of yo-yo sometimes you get like a, a wider bearing as well so that you can do unresponsive tricks but this is just a standard looping yo-yo they probably assume you're just going to use the one bearing a nice shiny new yo-yo factory loop 720 i don't know when these came out but this one i bought like half a year ago i've enjoyed it i just never really got to actually practicing it and the main reason is that with looping tricks which is predominantly what you see with bridget because she throws the yo-yo out hits people with it and she needs the yo-yo to come back there are more complicated styles of yo-yo tricks that involve these unresponsive yo-yos, but honestly speaking, when you think yo-yo tricks, you think of a person doing like spinning wheels and circles out in the air. So let's open up the red one and the blue one and let's make two yo-yos that have two colors each. So I've got the red one here. You see on the inside of this yo-yo, you've actually got the spacer ring and then you've got the string which goes around the ball bearing on the axle here and then do the same with this blue one. You can see actually on the inside of the blue one, it's still got the same red spacers and that ball bearing. Ball bearing? Roller bearing? I'm never really sure what to call them. Pretty sure they're the same thing. Anyway, time to Frankenstein these yo-yos together. I've got the red one here, the blue one here. It's just gonna screw them together like so. And the reason I'm doing the screwing together before putting the yo-yo string on it is because I don't want it to get clamped in between the metal parts on the inside. It's easier if you just screw the yo-yo together and then put the string on afterwards. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other half. Looks pretty cool actually. So in addition to just looking kind of funky, it's gonna be hopefully good as a practice tool because I'll know whether the yo-yo has done a loop because it'll come out, come back, loop, and hopefully it will have flipped from this side to this side. Can't be bothered to cut the string right now, so I'm just going to use the same string that I was using before. I'm gonna slide this on like so. All right, time to try a looping trick. All right, so the main thing with these yo-yos is that you need them to do the loop properly, right? So normally you just throw the yo-yo out and it comes back. But the problem for me is that when I throw it out and it comes back, I also want to do a loop and sometimes the yo-yo comes back this way and sometimes it comes back this way. The string, which is winding over the top of the yo-yo, sometimes it'll come back to me like this and then sometimes it'll come back to me on the other side, rolling over the string and into my hand. What I really want, I think, is for the yo-yo to roll over the string into my hand so I'm ready for another loop. And at the moment, Maybe I've just been maybe I've just been practicing a lot more recently, but I'm getting it much more consistently. What? I'm getting it way more consistently than I was like literally yesterday. 
Okay, that was so that was incorrect, basically because it came back to my yo-yo hand like this, under the string. I actually turned my hand over so that I could catch it and be ready to throw it out again. But one of the tips that I picked up from the previous live stream when I was playing Guilty Gear, when I do the looping trick like this, I often like move my whole arm around, but a lot of people are saying try to keep it only in the wrist, and I think what happens there is that the tension is maintained and you don't, keep, you don't let the string get too slack on the inside of the loop. As you can see, I've got the red side on the outside. If I do a forward pass, I've still got the red side on the outside. If I flip my hand over, of course, I've got the blue side on the outside. So whenever the yo-yo comes back to my hand, it's only flipping colors right now because I'm flipping my hand over to get ready for the next trick. But before I turn my hand over, you can see it's still on the same side. So red on the outside, catch, red still on the outside. I flip my hand over and of course now blue is on the outside. What I want is for the yo-yo to do a proper flip when it comes back to me. So check this out, red on the outside, flip, and I can now see I've got blue on the outside. Actually, it wasn't really on the outside, it was kind of up like this because I caught it kind of sideways, but it was almost there, it was almost there. Let's try this again. Whoa, I got it! Blue on the outside. All right, and you can see it is now red on the outside. That is basically the only reason why I bought this yo-yo is because, I, the truth is, I already have two of these red yo-yos, but that was so I could do tricks with both hands. But one, I need to take a step backwards and go back to the point where I'm practicing actual clean loops. When I throw the yo-yo with the blue side out, when it comes back, it's gonna come back blue, and then I need it to flip over so that it goes out and then it comes back red in my hands like this. So I need it to actually do a flip. This is my recommendation. Definitely get two different colors, but of the same model of yo-yo, obviously. I'm definitely feeling like I get this trick the best when I don't let my hand move, when I just keep it locked in place and only let my wrist do the movement. Oh, <laughs> hit my hand. Like that, that seems to, be as close as I've got so far. The yo-yo is actually still coming back to me at this angle. Instead of being like this flat, it's still coming kind of tilted over. And in fact, as I understand it, I want it to come back to me tilted the other way. So if I'm holding it to the camera, I want it at the one o'clock position, but I think it is the 11 o'clock position for you. That's what I've seen from YouTube tutorials, but I can never really seem to get it to actually go at that angle. Well, not consistently at least. All right, to finish things off, what I'll do is one last loop like so, and then we'll do one last trick, the classic around the world. What an amazing trick. Listen, that's all I've got time for you today. I just wanted to update you on my progress as I've been getting back into yo-yo. If you're interested in string tricks, be sure to get yourself one of these. It's a, an unresponsive yo-yo. I don't think they make this particular model anymore, but just get yourself an unresponsive yo-yo. If you're interested in doing looping tricks, which is predominantly the sort of trick that you see Bridget doing in games like Guilty Gear Strive, I recommend these. Um, this is called the Loop 720. It cost me $20 each, so you'll need $40 to get a couple of them, but I highly recommend it because at least you can have different colors on each side and actually know whether the yo-yo has flipped over and changed color when it comes back to you. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. You can catch me on Twitch, live streaming, usually playing stuff like fighting games, Guilty Gear Strive, Melty Blood, that sort of thing. If you'd like to talk to other people who are interested in gear, yo-yos, arcade controllers, fighting games, join us on the Nihongo Gamer Discord, and last but not least, you can follow me on Twitter. That's all for today, guys. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer video.